Something that is very fascinating for us is that, which is in fact uh, part of our culture coming from South America and from a very new part of the South American culture, uh, because we don't have any uh, long tradition in craft, in, the, in this precious way of building and making something beautiful out of uh, uh, the, the, the connection of materials or a certain technology. Or, so we, we, we think that for us it's more the way in which you can build something with a, uh, the idea of doing it well but acknowledging that there is an, an inevitable failure in the human act of fabricating something with your hands. So I, I, I think that in the case of this pavilion you can see the traces of that effort of trying to make it right but uh, assuming that the construction with, with your hands is uh, inevitably uh, it's going to be a failure in a way. Failure in... in in the normal sense of perfection, of impeccable, no? But for us it's not a failure, it's all the opposite. It's, it's, and perhaps, perhaps in that sense the role of, of an architect as someone who can harness the levels of failure you can have in a project uh, is probably a notion we are interested in, you know, that, that you decide how mu you, um, you can be able to decide how much of the process and how much of its accidents you're al willing to allow. Mm -hmm. Up to what point that will become an essential texture of the result. So in the case of, of this uh, room, the encounter of the vertical traces in the middle point, it's a, an expression of that uh, 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 necessity to, to make it right or the impossibility of, of, of doing so. We, we don't consider that this construction, by the fact that uh, there, there is a lack of uh, finishing or roof or uh, insulation or, or glass on the, on the openings, is less architecture than a proper house. We think that the scale is given by the human body, by the time in which it is occupied, and not necessarily by, by those additional elements. Uh, know if you agree? Yes, no, I, I agree. I don't think this is a, of course it has uh, a different time span, but as an experience it's as, as physical and as uh, direct as architecture that maybe lasts a bit longer. So we don't make that distinction so at all. We don't consider that this is the, the pavilions are models for something else. The moment you can inhabit a space, it, it's a reality in, it, in its own right. We're not exhibiting anything, and I'm saying this in a very light way. It is, this pavilion is activating a lot of information that is already there, but it's not displaying explicitly not any of it. It's, it's up to really, I think, whoever walks past, whether he wants to rush through or to uh, meander and, and try to discover different scales, different moments of friction, different frames or conditions of light. Um, Temperature, smell, so it's, yes. And, but it's, and, and, it's, it's about the surrounding landscape, natural garden of, of uh, the Giardini, but it's also about the friction with other people and, and with your own mental construction of the spaces you're walking through, um, the sound that is being generated by, by you moving or talking as you go. Normally, we are very often uh, asked about why we don't do public buildings or large projects. And for us, it's not a, a matter of size. It's more the scale of a, of a proposal, the capacity of a building to articulate complex problems and, and to articulate a, a very intense experience in, in, a, in a particular reality. So you might have a huge building that is, in fact, irrelevant or, or, or rather tedious or, or so I, 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 don't, I don't relate size or... Or programmatic or program aspects. Or with, or, or, yeah, with, with the real scale of a, of, of a building, you might have a very tiny chapel that is so intense that makes you uh, wonder about something that you, you didn't know before. So I think it's more 
there is a depth in in in, in architecture that uh, goes beyond the the, the so-called real problems of society economics or political or social problems there is a but that's part of our position for the for the for the Biennale. Uh, we, we believe that nowadays it's even more important to consider to regain this, the status of architecture as a problem in itself that is that might be considered again as a tool to to be in the world properly to feel something to 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 make you think about the reality in which you live. By definition, architects are producing a reality, are projecting a reality for the future. Therefore, there is a, a degree of, uh, an inevitable degree of intentionality. You are proposing something and motivating a certain industry or, or a group of uh, uh, actors to, to do something. So you are directing that coordination. That's, of course, it's, it's an activation of a certain energy. What we don't agree so much is the role of the architect as a self-promoter or as a, a moral entrepreneur who is trying to validate their good intention with, uh, with society. If you say that architecture has to be sustainable or uh, social or, uh, let's say, uh, stable and safe, that's... N for us, that's the definition of what you do as an architect. You don't necessarily have to claim that you're doing, uh, I don't know, a, a, a functional building because, of course, it, it has to be like that. It has to be safe. It has to be, uh, it has to be connected with a certain society. So the moment you start, architects start uh, justifying and claiming that they are so good just because they are doing it explicit. That doesn't mean that the building is better. It's a there is a very subtle distinction. But I think, of course, architecture from its very essence is solving problems, and the problems constantly change. Uh, but probably the lifespan of architecture is many times larger than the problem that it addresses initially. Um, therefore, we think of architecture more in terms of this larger span, and hopefully that it might embody a set of values and not necessarily propose a solution. Uh, and, and I think this is um, something that maybe is much less quantifiable. Uh, we see it also a lot with our students that, that they, there is a lot of access to information and therefore somehow um, the communication of information seems to be important, very important to architecture, but it's only relevant in so much as you can articulate it into architecture. You know, because many times, if not, it, it can become a display of information and not necessarily a building or an experience. M media nowadays, in its uh, very wide uh, range of possibilities, from paper to newspapers and, and, and digital information, it's, it's, of course, extremely necessary to, to to convey certain uh, values, to, to, to discuss the, the impact of a certain building in a, in a, in a, in a certain place. Uh, what, is, where, what is perhaps more critical, paradoxically, is the fact that most of the time critique is based on the representations of, of buildings and not buildings themselves. So most of the time, you might say, as a journalist or even a, a, a professor, would criticize a building or would make a comment of a building based on the intentions of the architect and, or in, based on the way that building is uh, communicated to an audience with the concepts or with diagrams or with the, with the social conditions or statistics and numbers. And, and we think that that's very easy to do, that's very easy to to manipulate media because uh, uh, there is a, of course, you have to be sustainable, of, of course, you have to have a very clear position to the city, you have to put, be political, and, and all of that is, doesn't make the building better than a, a, another one that is there in silence, just performing its own reality. So I, I think it's a, it's, 
nowadays it's difficult because you see many young architects producing architecture that is meant to convey uh, a representation of a reality, a construction of, of an image, a construction of, uh, of, a, of a drawing or even a photograph, but not really the reality of architecture, which is a special condition uh, anchor to a certain place. So every time we explain a building, every time we draw, make paintings or whatever, or even lecture about what we do, we make a distinction. Every time someone says, ah, oh, well, but this painting, this or that, we say, okay, but that's a painting. This is not the building. This is just a tool for us to, to convey or to communicate a certain reality, we, which is not a real uh, activity. We, we, we are not uh, communicators. We are, we are producing a, a physical reality in a particular place. It is necessary, it's necessary to have um, people who can critically um, observe a building and of course write about it. Um, probably it would be ideal if whenever someone is doing that they visit the work. I think doing it from just images or is, it might be already a distortion of a distortion. Um, no, of course not. I think it is necessary. Uh, but I think there's, there's too much being said. Uh, and, and, and with the confusion of, of there's, talking there's some about very good things the, being the explanations said as well. or the drawings or the images or the, the, the concepts and not uh, the reality of the building, the reality of architecture. So we're not saying that you sh critics shouldn't be writing about what they see or what they experience. But the problem is that nowadays criticism has turned into uh, a system of references about something that is not there. So it's a representation or a construction over a representation and not a construction over a, a word. So it's not, a, it's the anti, uh, anti wildian uh, way of approaching criticism. The, the, the critic as, a, as, a, as, as, as an artist who construct a new reality on top of existing work of art. Nowadays, the critic becomes a, a builder of a new reality over the explanation of the work of art and not the work of art in itself.